So hello and welcome to this uh, episode of the podcast and this week I am really thrilled to be interviewing Lara Gerich who I have known for a number of years now and we have wonderful chats about data governance whenever we talk so I knew she would be a perfect guest for the podcast so if you haven't come across Lara I'd really recommend you go and follow her on LinkedIn. She's an author, a, a trainer, a data governance consultant consultant. She runs her own consultancy out in uh, San Francisco, which makes it, I, I would say should make it harder for us to talk to each other. But, but Lara seems to be awake all during the night. So it's actually remarkably easy to talk to Lara. Um, but she shares some really great stuff online. Her book is really great. Um, yeah, I'm really, really thrilled that she agreed to be interviewed on my podcast. So welcome, Lara. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Nicola. And um, so obviously you and I have known each other for a number of years, as I just said, but just for the benefit of the people listening, how long have you been working in data governance? And, and more interestingly, how did you actually get into it? Wow, that's a good question, Nicola. And uh, well, I guess we are two of the weirdest persons, if there's a word like that, <laughs> to actually love data governance. And, uh, you know, so I was really excited to have met you years, years ago that, you know, I thought I was the only weird person on the planet that loved this thing called governance of data. And so how, and how long have I been in the data governance? Um, I've been doing data, I've been in data management uh, for over two decades now. Actually, I started my career in, <laughs> in London right there before moving to the US. Uh, so I would say, um, I really zoomed in into data governance the last eight years in that park. I started my uh, career in uh, right out of college, um, doing development, you know, uh, studied computer science uh, development, and then I went into analytics, data warehousing, and uh, transitioned into regulatory reporting, um, after the 2009 financial fiasco and uh, uh, a lot of fun in that park space. And then from that, I, you know, I was actually, how I got into data governance was I was nominated into the role because I, I guess I made too much noise around um, the quality of the data we're doing, uh, we're using for all our regulatory reporting and, uh, I always question the data by my the nature of my DNA. So, um, so I made enough noise, and then when um, the bank that I was in decided to kick off governance, you know, formally, um, and I wasn't in that room, and they had nominated me to champion that effort, and so that was how I found myself in data governance. But uh, in hindsight, I realized all along, all I've been doing, even through my career, was. Uh, an informal governance uh, because I was always the one to question the trust in the data, the quality of the data, what we're doing with the ethics of the data. So yeah, I would say holistically zoomed in into data governance, I would say in the last eight, year, eight years there about. But it sounds like it was inevitable <laughs> the way your career yes. was going, which is great. No, it's it's wonderful that you know, you know, you ended up doing it. So I'm always interested because I I've got this theory that certain people are, are good at data governance because they just have the right characteristics to do it. So I wonder what characteristics do you have that you think make you successful at data governance? And then more importantly, why are they the ones that are making you successful? Oh, that's a good question too. I think my DNA is, um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I had to actually reflect on myself and I ask myself that same question. I think my personal DNA, and I think you equally, uh, we're one of those people that really uh, question the why, the why, uh, you know, as a little child, you know, when you ask to do something, you ask question why, because I want to know the end in mind and people who know me know I always want to question the end in mind, even with everything, because that's really what drives, you know, my passion around things. And when it comes to data, I have, you know, I'm, I'm 
I'm very passionate about data and I really seriously, I'm one of the few people that don't even consider it as a job. Uh, to be honest, I'm very passionate about talking about governance, the ethics, how we can really exploit data and find the hedge in it and uh, do all the great things that, you know, so I, I, I have that DNA uh, and, uh, you know, and um, I'm, over the years as well, I've come to realize that um, uh, stewardship is key. Stewardship is governance, and uh, is actually is actually governance in motion. So governance is really uh, realized with stewardship, and I'm one of those uh, that you know I. I, I, I don't only talk about governance. I actually want to build community out of it. So because I'm a community builder by my nature, so it's easier for me to engage people. It's easier for me to understand people. And because I've been in this, all I know about out of college is all about data. So I always say I started my career and I moved into really where I should be. My sweet spot really is governance because I can come from a position, I came from a position of pain. And I always look for the same when I'm looking <clears> for, <throat> in governance, for instance, mm. uh, when I'm uh, working with clients in any organization, I'm looking for data rules. I, I, I'm looking for candidates that have that DNA. They understand the pain. So if you find somebody that is coming from a position of pain, uh, it's, it's, you, it's you, you have to do less work, really convincing them to become an ally. And I'm very resilient and I, I, I you know, I, I'm very, you know, I, I, I won't tell you what you need to hear. I will tell you what, you, I won't tell you what you want to hear. I will tell you what you need to hear. And that's really what I enjoy with even my independence and my little boutique, my consultancy. So I have that where I will say things that other people are thinking about, but maybe they're afraid to say it. Uh, I don't take it personal that um, people might not necessarily come running to say, let's do governance. Well, I wanna be able to question their mind to ask a few questions that would probe their mindset to actually position themselves. I know that really, if we call data an asset as an organization, then we need to treat it as, treat it as an asset. That's the only way, and there's no shortcut around it. No, absolutely. I agree with you 100% there, Laura. <laughs> So, as you know, um, a lot of the people who listen to this podcast are, are just starting out in data governance. So I'm always keen to know, what do you wish you'd known when you were just starting out? A lot. I wish I knew a lot. I wish I knew um, that there is politics in governance. That's one thing. <laughs> Absolutely. And as I walk into different organizations, I see different at different degrees. Uh, I wish I knew that um, as much as people uh, pitch governors, um, I wish I realized that um, more people are actually interested in what governance has to offer in, 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 in the sense of its benefits, the edge we find in the data, the insight, the, the, mm -hmm. the trust. But unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, Fewer of those people are really committed to doing what it needs, what we need to do in order to get there. So when it comes to commitment of what we need in order to move the needle, to position our data at the optimal, so that we can begin to really uh, find it, you know, harness it for all of our data initiatives to be it drive all of those ROIs that we have in mind. We need to invest time. We need to invest resources. You need to be committed. And if you look at it, you know, you and I, Nicola, know this, that one of the biggest challenges that we have in governance is still executive buy-in. <laughs> Getting the buy-in at the top level. And I question that, why? If everybody knows that it's the right thing to do uh, for us to take optimal care of our data, it's the right thing to do uh, for transparency, it's the right thing to do uh, that we have accountability. If this are common sense, you would think common sense would be common practice, but it isn't, especially at the top level. So I've made it a mission to uh, challenge that, to disrupt that, 
And uh, the only way, and, and that's probably one of the reasons why I really uh, moved myself outside into an independent space where I can really, um, as I engage clients, I, you know, I can walk into an organization by the time I talk to one or two people that are driving it, I can tell you if it's going to be successful or not, uh, because the people, the person you put at that driving seat really needs to be very serious about the treatment of data as an asset, not just pitch it. And I will know that by how much of a commitment and investment they put into that. So I wish I knew all of that. <laughs> Not much, I got it. but the nice thing is everybody <laughs> listening to this now knows what you wish you'd known. But I, and so um, I, I think that what you're describing is sounds so familiar, not just from my own journey into data governance, but also um, from, from like talking to loads of people on my courses over the years. So just to, to close this off, I'd love to know what, what would your best piece of advice be for those people who are just starting working in data governance? First, if you're just starting uh, getting into data governance, I want to applaud you first because you've picked the best career in in my, you know, according to me, I think you've picked, picked the best career. And if you're really passionate about data, if you're really passionate about taking data, uh, you know, to the, to the best places and just getting the limitless ROI out of it, first, you need to develop, you need to have a tough skin. Uh, you need not to take it personal when people just, uh, you know, when people resent it, when you walk into an organization or you walk in an organization and, you uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you're finding people are, you know, dragging their legs. Don't take it personal. They, you know, it's, it's common in every organization I've worked in. And, and trust me, I've been in so many organizations, the big, the last, you have seen it. You have seen it. The, the, the good, the bad, the ugly. Know yourself, know you are an advocate, you know, a, a, an advocate for data at its best. And you are the voice of the data. And, uh, uh, and I would encourage you to continue to build allies around yourself. Build allies around yourself, get yourself a good network, make that, you know, because again, uh, uh, build a network of data champions around yourself and um, join communities. You know, it, it's, you know, in the days that, you know, I think the days that Nicola and I started, we didn't have all this LinkedIn wonderful community that you could reach out into you. I mean, it was just, you know, uh, it was very, very lonely. It's still very lonely, but you can you can start building community around, you know, join data communities, understand emerging trends, what's going on, emerging technologies, and you know, and again, find yourself a good coach. You know, coach, wow, well, you can never outgrow being coach. That's if you don't take anything from away from what I just said. This is very important. Find yourself a coach. You are going to need it all the way because governance is a journey, we say. Read books, read articles, and uh, keep yourself current. And um, you're never going to find, you're, you're never going to have a dull moment. That would be my advice. <laughs> this is very true. Definitely no dull moments with data governance. Maybe a frustrating one or two, but no dull ones. So <laughs> thank you so much, Lara. It has been um, as great as always speaking to you. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to share such wisdom with um, my listeners. I'm sure they will find it very valuable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. <laughs>